go. All right, joining me, my guest at this time is a rap artist from Florida. She goes by the name of Black Music. She's with me right now. Good evening. Hello, how are you? I'm doing real good. And uh, first and foremost, I want to thank you for being on the show this evening. Most definitely. You're welcome. I appreciate you for having me. And uh, let's go ahead and begin. Uh, what made you decide to get into hip-hop? How did you... What got you into becoming an artist? Well, basically, whenever I was young, I always liked to rhyme, liked to dance, and I just, you know, liked to doing poems or whatever, and I just decided to up it, do music, put it together, rap. Who do you consider as musical influences? It doesn't necessarily have to be hip-hop, but who do you consider as your influences? Kurt Franklin. Kurt Franklin is definitely the one. He's my inspiration. He's a, a gospel artist. I'm not sure if you know, but um, he actually was doing hip hop before he started doing Christian music. But he's still a hip hop Christian artist, and he is my influence most definitely. I'm definitely familiar with Kurt Franklin. As a matter of fact. I seen him perform before. I, oh really? I I've seen him perform before. He performed at a uh festival. It was an outdoor festival at a um and it was it was a Christian festival called Ictus and it located it's located at Kentucky and they have some of the big names of Christian and gospel music artists and from my understanding uh, Kurt Franklin was the only gospel artist that was there, and he brought a lot of energy. Crowd was into it, and that mm -hmm. was that was the first um, notable big name that I got a chance to see in person, and and, and he got he got the crowd into it, and it, yes, he did. and uh, he's one thing one thing he doesn't lack, and that's energy. And he bought and he brings that everywhere he goes, uh, whether it's a white crowd or a black crowd, he brings a lot of energy. The choir behind him sings with such uh, passion, and uh, mm -hmm. it's just it's if you haven't been to a Kurt Franklin concert or performance, it will it will blow you away. I can say from experience for sure. I would definitely love to go and see one of them, most definitely. I saw him on TV, but I never got a chance to see him in person. Well, hopefully, I'm sure he'll be performing in your neck of the woods in Florida in the future. Uh, maybe Miami or Orlando. I don't know how far that is from where you, you live in. But mm -hmm. um, I guess you can consider that. So, uh a consideration uh oh yeah so um but back to you uh miss black music mm -hmm. um mm -hmm. now as far as um hip-hop is concerned uh do you remember the first ever song that you ever wrote yes i do <laughs> yes i do as a matter of fact i still sing that song up to this day <laughs> Yes, I do. And it was titled, Now What You Gonna Do? And it was pretty much targeted to the men now that now that I'm this person or this, that person and we're going through what we're going through, what you gonna do? And it was basically saying break bread. Break bread is another form of fashion of how we speak street terms and give me money, cut the money, cut the check, buy me this, buy me that. So basically, it was just targeting to all the men, you know. Um, uh, break bread, like I said, was another street term of, you know, give me money, basically. Buy me this, buy me that, get my hair done, get my nails done. I'm just targeting the men, telling them break bread. <laughs> so, um, translation, what you're really saying is, you hold your <laughs> end of the bargain, and you want the man out there to hold their end of the bargain. That's that's exactly what I'm saying. Yeah. <laughs> so, 
So <laughs> let me ask you this: uh, as a female hip hop artist, obviously is a dominant male genre, and there has been a few female artists that has had success. Um, mm -hmm. Do you feel to this day that even though there are some notable female artists such as Iggy Azela and Nicki Minaj has had success, that you feel like maybe female artists don't necessarily get that equality that the male do, and what I what I mean by that is I'm I'm talking radio play, I'm talking DJ spins, I'm talking um enough attention. Do you feel like mm -hmm. maybe the female artists, although they have had success, you feel like they have to work twice as harder than the a male hip hop artist just to get the recognition, not just the recognition, but the respect from fans and their peers yes i do i definitely um think that it's harder for us now and that they have to work twice as hard why i don't know but it is like that majority of the people that listen to hip-hop music or whatever you know what i'm saying it's just i don't know if it's something about the performances of a man or you know the way they deliver or what it is but for a female it is hard it's very hard you would think it would be the other way around that you would have most females listening to females but you got females listening to more men you know what i mean and it's, it's I, don't, I don't know but as for me i'm gonna bring it any way it goes i'm gonna bring it I'm going to bring it, and I'm going to try to be that artist that step in the gap for some of the females, because some of the females, it's hard to entertain men when you're rapping. You see what I'm saying? It, it, it's hard, regardless of what you, what outfit you're wearing, whatever the case may be, how you look, no matter your appearance, no matter your performance, it's just hard to entertain a crowd when you're rapping. You know what I mean? So that's why whenever... I do perform. I try to give them more than just standing up on stage, giving holding the mic. You know what I mean? I try to pretty much just forget that I'm rapping, and I try to think that I'm talking. I try to forget that I'm entertaining. I just, I can't really say, no, I can't say that I try to forget that I'm entertaining. But I try to forget that I'm rapping. I try to forget that I'm singing. I I just pretty much just try to talk to them. You know what I mean? Just, just go hard, whatever. I just try to be in that zone and just, Give them all I got. And, and, and so far, I have been successful. I've been seeing, you know, when I perform, I, I've been able to bring, get the man, man crump. I've been able to get the females crump. You know what I mean? But, yes, it is definitely hard for a female. And they have to work twice as hard with promoting, with the stage performances, with everything. I, I To this day, you know, that's what I feel. I feel like a female, you know, has to go beyond what a male does in order to get in the position where they need to be successful. And I feel, you know, that's unfortunate. And I'll tell you what else is unfortunate. The fact that the male artists they bond t towards each other they have that strong unity mm -hmm. albeit there are some artists out there that don't like each other but the the strong the the bond is still stronger than the hatred if you will and as for oh, yeah. and as for female artists i guess it feels like that could only be one and everyone else has to just settle for second and mm -hmm. you know the the earring comes off and it's, it goes beyond the music. It's like physicality, physicality needs to be involved. Do you feel like, do you think that there, there's ever going to come a point where female hip-hop artists needs to, you know, stop going towards each other on racks or, you know, in interviews, etc., and maybe they need to show just as strong as unity as the man does? 
Definitely, yes. I think I think if if that does happen or if that can happen, then maybe the females can get that um, kind of how can I say it? Maybe if that does happen, then maybe the the female can become I ain't gonna say more dominant because of course they're gonna have more men out there that's rapping. But you know what I'm saying? The females can probably start to begin to get that attention that the men get. And I'm gonna say something though. Me as an artist, first and foremost, my mentality in this rap game is um, negativity towards a female, zero tolerance. Um, um, battles with females, zero tolerance. I, I'm not that type of artist that choose to do battles. I don't do sneak. I don't do diss tracks. Period. You know what I mean? And the reason why I don't do that because the type of artist I am is basically I'm all for the women. You know what I mean? Rather they're rapping, rather they're singing, or rather they're on the street. My target is females. And I just think that I'm going to be one of the artists, you know, to reach the artists, the female artists that's in my area to bring us together. You feel what I'm saying? To try to, even if it's calling up everybody, hey, let's do a track together. You know what I mean? Let's just try to do something just to blow everybody's mind. You know, all female track, all female show, or whatever the case may be. You know what I'm saying? Like, just try to pull all the females together because just like you said, it, the women out there is, that's exactly what it is. It's I'm better than this chick or I rap better than this chick or I do that. And, and that's exactly what it is. That's one of the biggest problems we have as female artists. You know what I mean? I, I mean, I, my manager is one of those that pretty much he try to he he does try to do that. He try to get females together and do different tracks with them. You know what I'm saying? He's always trying to do different um, projects with nothing but females. You see what I'm saying? And and that's just the type of artist I am. And I really believe that if we can come together as female artists, you know. We can make that change. We can make that happen. We be we can become more, you know, um, visual to the world, so to speak. You know, I. It is possible that we could see the unity towards female artists. I guess it's just going to take some time, and I don't know how mm -hmm. long it's going to be. You know, I hear from I read like the. What was it? I read the bio of Missy Elliott and her uh, ver uh, Twitter uh, Twitter handle. She said mm -hmm. she wants to have like a concert with all female hip hop artists, and that has, that's encouraging coming for someone like Missy, who's been in the rap game for a long time, and she hasn't been active musically because of health problems, but she is eventually going to come back and hopefully by the time she comes back maybe she can work on making that a reality but you know I, I guess it's going to take some time and you know once the the bickering the, the all that stops then you know but I guess it just goes back to what hip hop once was and that was competitive mm -hmm. And everybody wants to strive to be the best, and I can understand that. There's never going to be a genre of music that is competitive than hip hop. You're not going to get that from pop and R and B and rock and country, etc. You're only going to get that from hip hop for as long as people play hip hop on the airwaves and all over the world. Um, as far as you musically, I've heard your tracks. I heard it through. Reverb Nation, I play your song, one of your songs, it's called I Will, uh, mm -hmm. I, I totally dig the track, and I also checked out the music video that you did, and I want you to talk about that, what was it like working on the music video? Which one? The, um, the, the I'm the, sorry, go ahead. Yeah, the latest video you did. You said what it what was it like? Yeah, what was it like shooting the video? Um, it was it was cool, you know what I'm saying? The video that video the video that I shot actually the not the promo video but the real video that I shot which is titled Money and I'm sorry, um yeah, Money and Everything. 
Yeah. I used that video and I used it to target, uh, to record in my, my community and my hood. You know what I mean? So it was kind of cool. You know, I was trying to involve everybody that had something going on, some kind of hustle or some kind of grind. You know what I mean? Whether it was washing cars or doing hair, any, any kind of way that they were doing to make money so that I can show everybody what's going on in my hood, what's going on in my neighborhood, how we grind, how we getting money. And like I said, I tried to um, I tried to um, include like the hood as far hood so to speak as far as like the um, how can I say it like the I don't want to say the trashy part of it, <laughs> but um, like you know, like uh, the area where everybody is at, you know, like the the struggle of my hood. Yeah, we can say it like that. I wanted to show everybody the struggle of my hood. You feel what I'm saying? Like where it comes from, and then there's a reason that I did that. If I may, I did that because the men that I signed with a record label, a major record label, I want to come back. And I'm going to do that same exact song. And I'm going to do it in the same neighborhood. And when you look at the video that I've done then versus the video that I'm going to do when I sign, you will see that, oh, she came back and this is what she did for her hood. This is what she did for her community. Because I'm going to try my best. I ain't going to be able to change the place. You feel what I'm saying? But I'm going to try my best to make it look so different and to make the people in the in the hood feel like, you know what I'm saying, that all their support that they was giving me was worth it. Because look what she did. I'm going to try to come back and change the gym. I'm going to try to come back and change, you know what I'm saying, the, the parts of the kids to play on or something like that. But the video itself, not trying to get off the subject, but the video itself, it was, it was cool. It was my first big video, you know what I'm saying, and it was, it was all about me. Like I said, the video, I didn't really pretty much um, have a lot of people in the background, you know what I'm saying, or nothing like that. But it was a meaning to it, and that was my meaning for shooting that video. Well, I checked the video out, and I enjoyed it. And you definitely rep you. Your, you definitely rep your hood to the fullest. And, you know, it's also, it's, it's always a good thing when an artist whether it's an indie artist, unsigned artist, or a major label artist, can go back to their home and do a video in front of the people they grew up with and just, you know, let them have their shine and just, mm -hmm. you know, that, that exposure, if you will, because people talk, when people talk about the hood or the ghetto or the streets, there's always something negative. And you watch these videos uh, from artists, you know, gives the hood a, a different light, a different meaning, a different feel, and mm -hmm. it's not it's not all that bad unless you talk to people, you know, to the wrong people or whatever. Then that's a whole different right. whole different feel. Um, right. So, for people out there that wants to hear your music and your music videos. Uh, why don't you go ahead and promote your links how can people uh, check out your music and your videos and how can they get in touch with you social media okay well first of all you can go to my Instagram it's at one the number one black B-L-A-Q-U-E at Instagram.com I'm also on Facebook up under the new black and that's D-A-N-E-W B-L-A-Q-U-E or you can tweet me on Twitter at Black Music. And I also have a fan phone. People, you can use my fan phone to get in contact with me. You can use my fan phone. There's always somebody answering it. The number, if they don't answer, let me clarify that. <laughs> if they don't answer, leave a message. We will get back to you. It's 863 233 That's Twitter, Facebook, and Instagram. And I'm also, I have a link for my music, ReverbNation.com forward slash Black Stallion. Black Stallion. I like the sound of that. <laughs> yeah. Thank you. 
I got two more questions I want to ask you. The uh, the next question I want to ask you: You live in the state of Florida, and they have quite the history of hip hop. Bomb um, the legendary and yet controversial Two Life Crew, uh, Trick Daddy, uh, Trina, uh, Wick Walsh, and just to name a few. And as a as a person that lives in Florida and seen the culture for Florida and hip hop, how does that make you feel as a up and coming artist to see artists from your state get the shine, the recognition? And because when you think of New York, you, I mean, when you think of hip hop, you think New York and California. But over mm-hmm. the last decade plus, it's the South that's been getting the bigger buzz, the bigger recognition, and dare I say, the record sales and etc how does that make you feel as someone living in florida to see these artists from your neck of the woods getting the success that they had you mean i'm sorry i don't really understand that question oh uh, how does that make you feel watching these artists from your state um Mm -hmm. getting the getting the success that they had and you do you feel like that gives you a sign of well these people have the success and you know maybe there's there's a possibility okay. for me like how right. do you, how do you feel about that well i definitely definitely feel like there's an opportunity for me i think there's a huge opportunity for me and the reason why i say that because the more the artists is, uh, uh, you know, we're down south, you know what I mean? And I'm south of in down south, so I'm to the bottom. But for, you know, down south artists, is, there's a grind about them that their music, if it's promoted right and it's pushed right, you know what I'm saying? They can become successful because no matter what, people from the states up north or wherever they at, they're going to want to hear the music from down south. It's nothing like down south music. Let me get that straight. I'm from New York, but it is nothing like down south music. And if it's promoted right and it's uh, performed right, not necessarily performed right, but if it's promoted right, they're going to support you. And it just lets me know. It just makes me feel like, you know, there's an opportunity. Every day I wake up, I feel like I... Every day I wake up, I just, I, I make sure I have my phone on full because I'm going to want to make sure, I mean, I'm going to get that phone call. I'm thinking every morning I wake up, I'm going to get a phone call. I'm going to get a phone call from somebody. You feel what I'm saying? Because even, I didn't even know my music was in Alabama. I've never been to Alabama a day in my life. You know what I mean? But I get people calling me from Alabama saying, you know, I just had a DJ call me maybe like last week wanting to know what my schedule was like so I can come up there performing. And I'm down south because for some reason when you're in the north, they're going to want the it's just that something about that down south vibe that everybody likes. And to me, it's even easier for an artist that's down south versus one that's up north. If you, once people are up north and they're trying, they're trying to get on or they're trying to become famous or whatever the case may be, for some reason they move down south. You know what I mean? And it's just, I don't know, it's just something about the down south music. So, of course, I feel like I have an opportunity and it, it makes me feel like I'm going to make it. I may, I already made it. <laughs> I already made it. It's in my mind. Speak of those things that are not and they shall come to pass. I feel like when it comes to the south, they've always had the chip on the shoulder because... You know, it goes back to what I was saying earlier. East and West gets the recognition. Mm-hmm. They get the, they get all yeah. the recognition. And now mm-hmm. here we are about a decade plus, and the South is just getting the bigger buzz. And yeah. New York artists, New York uh, and, and L.A., at least majority of them, I'm not going to say all of them, but majority of them have, haven't quite have the that recognition or yeah. success or whatever, unless your name in the East Coast is Jay Z and Fifty right. Cent and Nas, and in the West mm-hmm. Coast, unless your name is uh, Kendrick Lamar and you know the success he's been having, and um, but the South is taking over, 
hip hop. Oh, yeah. And they're going to keep doing it until someone from New York, not named the artist that I mentioned, right. shows up and, and say, hey, we're, we're still here. So uh, uh, we'll see how that goes. Now, my last mm -hmm. my last question for you before we get off the air, mm -hmm. this I want to get your your thoughts on a situation that's going on right now, and I'm not sure if you heard, uh, uh, um, you probably may have read it through social media and through the news, but it appears mm -hmm. that Little Rain wants out of cash money. Now, my first reaction. I'm thinking maybe his Twitter was hacked. Uh, and then his manager said that everything was fine. And then Wayne just last night uh, at a performance made it clear he wants out of cash money. I'm thinking to myself, can, they, could, can there be a cash money record or YMCMB all together without Wayne? Can you really have that even though you still have Drake and Nicki? Well, pretty much, he wants out of the label because they won't let him release the Carter Five. And if you're not gonna let the guy release hit this, what could be his last album ever? Let the man go. Let let him sign to another label. Let him sign, put the album out independently, or just let him be. I am shocked to hear that that he. And the label that he pretty much grew up with, we know this guy since he was just a 18, 19 years old. He's grown, he's evolved into the, the rapper he is today. You know, Juvie left the label, now he came back. Turk has left the label. Manny Fresh has left the label. BG has left the label. And as of 2014, Buster Wines has left the label. Mystical wants out, he still hasn't gotten that request. Tiger has now left the label and now your franchise player wants out how do you feel about this little wing and cash money situation and do you really think that cash money would consider letting him go well, well to be honest with you I haven't really heard much about it but let's get something straight though all right Cash money is um, cash money is one of the most powerful leading companies in this industry. Mm -hmm. You know, I, I'm, almost any artist would want to be on cash money. Would want to be with cash money. Okay, but as far as him letting him go, I don't know. I honestly don't believe they will. It's, it's, it's got to be some, it's got to be more to it. They're not going to just let them up and go like that. And if they do, I don't know if cash money is going to be cash money again. <laughs> no. <laughs> but um, um, I think, I know this, you're not questioning me about Tigger, but I kind of think that Tigger feels like he's not getting enough support from cash money. Um. And I'm not sure if this has anything to do with the reason why the Wayne went out or, you know, I don't, I don't know. I don't know. But I know he, they, they miss, they accused cash money on several occasions for mismanagement, financially or otherwise, whatever the case may be. And like I said, I don't know if this is something, the reason why the Wayne went out or whatever the case may be, but I don't think it's going to happen, me personally. And if it does happen, I just don't. I just don't see cash money being cash money. You know, it's 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 to to use a sports analogy. This is like Peyton Manning with the Colts. This is like mm -hmm. Michael Jordan with the Bulls. This is like, uh, yeah, that's the only two examples I can think of. But as <laughs> Wayne. No longer being in cash money, that will be <laughs> hard to to believe. But right. but clearly Wayne has, you know, he's made it clear in that performance yesterday. He feels he's in a bad situation, and you know, management, A.K.A. the Birdman, 
You right. know, and um, clearly they're not seeing both sides are not seeing eye to eye, and mm -hmm. maybe it's more than just the fact that he's trying to put the Carter Five out. The Carter Five was supposed to be coming out this Tuesday, and mm -hmm. it looks like that, and and that's even a potential by Wayne's fans trying to put this album out before Christmas. And although it's quite the gesture from fans, mm -hmm. uh, but that ain't happening. So uh, right, you yeah. Know, so you, <laughs> so you can save I... your ten, fifteen bucks for something else, unless you're gonna wait until Wayne puts it out on his terms, or he and Cash Money come to uh, a solution, a resolution, if you will. But right, if, if Wayne, if they let him go, mm -hmm. I, then yeah, you can't card cash money anymore, because he's right. the, he's he and Birdman are the remaining artists from the label since it first started. Now you got right. you got Nicki and you got Drake, but they're young money. We talking cash money here. Right. So, right. <laughs> and with all due respect to Drake and Nikki, they ain't Wayne. They ain't mm -hmm. Wheezy. They did not sell a million records with a single album by himself. So, right. it's just it's it's something to really think about. And I hope Cash Money and Wayne to can can work things out because this this is this is. This feels like Jay Z and Rockefeller now. This is what it feels like. Exactly. So, mm -hmm. and Jay and Dame bump heads. This is starting to feel like a sequel to that. So, I guess I'll leave it at that. That's just my thoughts. <laughs> on it. And, and and we are going over the 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 time. So uh, I'm yeah. gonna go ahead and end this. <laughs> But black, okay. black music. Thank you so much for joining me. You all can check out her Reverb Nation YouTube, Twitter, uh, and Facebook, and uh, keep an eye on this lady. She, she, she's only getting started. She got and listen to, and not only you can listen to her music on Reverb Nation, but you can download all the songs for free. For free, that's right. Absolutely free. You're not gonna get that for major label artists. Or independent artists, unless they mm -hmm. put out mixtapes. But you can download her music for free. Thank you for your time. Continue success for that music. Thank you for your time. Thank you. All right, you have a good night. All right, you too. Thanks. All right, bye bye. All right, yep. That was Black Music joining me, and uh, yeah, we are seven minutes.